The movie begins with a man who looks angry and out of it. He has a knife in his hand and is ready to kill, but instead, he destroys an artwork. The scene then goes into a prison in the Netherlands where a sickly old man is being held. The guard tells him that he will be executed and comments that they can't just do that. His name is Han van Meegeren. He was an infamous Dutch art forger from the 1920s, until his capture for his involvement with the Nazis in the 1940s. In an office, the psychiatrist offers him a stick of cigarettes and asks, what is at risk? The man replies that it's his soul. He explains that he has put all his life into his work, and they talk about the occupation with his life being ruined. The man wants revenge and asks if the psychiatrist believes him. He goes out of his cell fully dressed as he attends a court trial date. It turns out he refused counsel for his defense because he was unable to convince a lawyer to take his case so he ended up defending himself. According to the judge, he has a conflict with Vermeer, a famous painter. Han says he never had a Vermeer, and his name was only mentioned in Hermann Göring's account. Göring is a powerful Nazi figure. The judge tells him that he sold a Vermeer and that he is being tried for collaborating with Hitler's associate, Göring, by selling paintings. Han denies the allegation, but he is being forced to admit his crimes or else he will be executed by firing squad. He insists that it is not a Vermeer but it is his own work. Han starts to tell his own account of the story which flashes back to before the war. He is alone and seemingly euphoric, only covered by a loincloth. He is a painter as well with positive vibes. He baked a painting in the process of making a painting older, but it got caught in the fire. Back in his cell, the guard opens it and Han is resting. He is visited by his own son, who accuses him of being associated with the Nazis and claims that Goring is painting his work. His son does not seem to believe in his innocence and pleads that he admits it, so that he won't be executed. Han admits that he forged the painting, and his son becomes estranged. In the past, Han van Meegeren looked at Vermeer's work, including the girl with the pearl earrings. Han is an artist and draws a portrait of his wife and son. He starts doing portraiture for other people. However, Han is downplaying his own talents. He attempted to be intimate with his wife, but she refused, then turned to drink. His wife says she likes the painting, but Han does not believe it and thinks his talent is not good, and that he is a nobody. He smudged the painting of his wife and son, and his wife tries to alleviate him by seducing him to bed. Han van Meegeren presented his work, Madonna and Child, and earned a medal for it. He received praise and appreciation. From afar, he saw a mysterious woman. He displayed his artwork and claimed that it would be a big blow to Picasso as they removed his piece from the wall. The mysterious woman looked like Cleopatra or Ophelia. Han criticizes Picasso for being unable to paint that's why he's using shapes, but the couple told him otherwise. It turns out the woman is Bram Bredius' wife, Jelenka. He asked Mrs. Bredius to pose for him. Mrs. Bredius posed in the middle of the party house, and he started doing her portraiture seriously, being in the zone. He paints and draws on the tablecloth and creates a drawing of her in the style of Picasso. The couple likes it and asks for payment. He forges Picasso's signature, but he throws away the tablecloth anyway. After the party, they laugh about what happened. His friend invites him upstairs, saying he has something special. They go up and see a room full of furniture. His friend arranges that since he has no studio, it would become his and he could paint portraits of ladies as clients. Han claims he is Vermeer from Delft, as he forges his works. He accepts his friend's offer and starts a professional art studio as a business. In another shift of time, Han took out a baked canvas and tried to smudge it. He resorted to drinking and then painted again. Back in the trial, the judges and prosecutors are stating that he has sold the Vermeer to the occupiers. He insisted that it wasn't a real Vermeer but a Van Meegeren, his own painting. And he has sold it to Goring for 1.5 million euros. He is asked if he has painted the work himself, and he says yes, that he can paint like that. He can paint like Vermeer. In another time jump, Han is teaching art classes to old, wealthy ladies. A charismatic Jelenka comes in and signs up for a class. Han begins teaching the class and notices that the new student is invested in the process of creating art. He compares Jelenka's earrings and faces to another painting and presents a deer as a model for art. Mrs. Bradius pays him and judges his work. He continues his conversation with the warden about his desire for revenge because he feels betrayed. The warden thinks he may be insane, but Han denies it, saying that his hatred is like a crime of passion. In another flashback, Han is mixing colors and paints that almost blinded him. He walks around blind in his house. His wife and son have left him. When he is given for his eyes, he starts to snort it. He presents another forgery, this time a painting by Hals. They decide to show it to experts, presenting it as real. He also restores an artwork and presents it to Bredius. Bredius likes the deer that Han drew, but Han refuses to consider it art. He wants to purchase it. Bredius inspects the painting and is convinced that it is a forgery. He proves his theory by smudging a cotton ball infused with alcohol on the painting, and the color comes off, which is unusual for a century-old painting. Bredius is called an expert witness and testifies that the painting is a superior work by Vermeer, 
and confirms it is authentic. Han explains that paintings can be forged by hardening the pigments using Bakelite and using old frames and canvases to make a painting look old. In the second flashback, he starts experimenting with pigments safely, this time wearing goggles. He begins to create the perfect pigments that Vermeer uses. During the summertime, he awakens and sees his oven, as he waits for the swatched pigment to dry. He tests it by smudging it with alcohol, but it doesn't smudge no matter how hard he tries. This signifies his success in hardening the newly painted pigment. Han and his wife attended a dance performance at a theater, and during the show, Han became captivated by Jalenka Lakatos, one of the dancers. Her movements were fluid and graceful, and her energy on stage was magnetic. Han couldn't take his eyes off her, but he tried his best to not let his wife notice. After the show ends, Han couldn't contain his amazement at the performance, but his wife couldn't help but feel the brewing jealousy within her as she notices her husband's invested attention on Jalenka. She leaves the theater in anger, and Han is aware of it, but he doesn't follow her. After knocking on Jalenka's door, Han is invited in, and they start talking about her recent dance performance. He congratulates her on her amazing performance and hands her a bouquet of flowers. Jalenka, feeling overwhelmed by his sudden visit and attention, is surprised but tries to keep her composure. Han notices her nervousness and reassures her that he only wants to talk to her. Han drops Jalenka off at her home, but she doesn't want to go inside, feeling restless and wanting to continue talking to him. She tells Hans that she wants to pose for him again, but she will not take off her clothes. Hans is hesitant at first but eventually agrees, and they leave for his studio. Jalenka tells Han that she has been living in Amsterdam since she was 16. She left Budapest and traveled to Belgium before eventually arriving in the Netherlands. She met Bram Bradius through her foster father and ended up marrying him for security as he appeared to be wealthy. Hans is curious if Jalenka truly loves Bram, to which she confirms that she does. Jalenka keeps her distance from Hans as she is reminded of his wife. However, Hans convinces her to sit down again as he has not finished painting her portrait. She puts out her cigarette and returns to posing. Hans instructs her to pose in a similar way to the girl with the pearl earring by Johannes Vermeer. As he paints, he captures the fierce and golden glint in her eyes. A palpable tension hangs in the air between the two as Jalenka finishes posing for the day. Hans shows her the painted silhouette of her portrait, and she feels enamored with the way he has captured her beauty. Jalenka slowly reaches for his hands, leading to an embrace. Their intimate moment is interrupted by Theo van der Pass, who carries a bottle of wine and witnesses their apparent interaction. Theo warns Hans to stay away from Jalenka as she is already married, and their affair could harm Hans' career. Han is thrilled to hear that Bredius is willing to open an exhibition and immediately sets to work on completing Jalenka's portrait. Jack, his young boy, watches him closely and asks many questions, eager to learn from his father. With Hans's guidance, Jack finishes his own portrait of the two of them and is bursting with pride over his creation. Hans encourages Jack to sign his own work, teaching him the importance of taking credit for his talent. Anna arrives and immediately whisks Jack away, calling Hans an imbecile as she goes on wiping away ink smudges on his hands. Anna sees the work in progress of Hans's portrait of Jalenka. Hans asks if she likes it. Anna looks at it and gives her honest opinion then says she likes it because there's so much life in his painting of Jalenka. She can't contain the feeling that Hans has poured more love into his painting of Jalenka. After Anna and Jack leave the studio, Hans creates a more sensual version of Jalenka's portrait, which Theo remarks expresses Hans' desire. They discuss his excellent craftsmanship, which reminds them of Megarin. Hans then paints a portrait of Jesus Christ and practices rationalizing his own work. In the exhibition, all of Van Megarin's works are displayed. He presents Jalenka with a sensual portrait, and she observes it while Bram watches. Bram asks Jalenka if she likes it, but she responds that she didn't paint it, and he asks if she posed for it. Jalenka clarifies that the painting reflects how Han sees her, and she moves away, exchanging glances with Han. Bram senses Han's feelings towards his wife and proceeds to criticize and ridicule Han's works during his speech, calling him an amateur with no original style. As Han's alcoholism worsens, he tears off papers with criticisms, and Bram continues to belittle his talent. Critics continue to write about him. In another flashback, while giving a presentation to the judges, Hans narrates the suffering and work process of an artist against so-called experts who ruin the lives of artists. He shows slides of newspaper clippings about criticisms of his work, calling him a fake, immature, and a lot more hurtful words. The critics continue to ruin Hans as a credible artist and vow revenge. In the 1920s, Hans lost his mind and destroyed his studio, painting words that read, I am nothing, I know nothing, I do nothing right. His son Jack visited him, but he paid him no attention. The words of the critics had taken their toll, and Hans believed that he was truly worthless. Confused by his father's state of mind, Jack approached him, though he was scared to do so. Hans asked what was wrong, and Jack burst into tears, saying he wanted to go to his grandpa instead. 
Both father and son cried together. Anne arrived and took Jack away, but before leaving, Jack gave Hans a gift, a portrait he had made featuring both of them. Jack left with Anna, and the church bell rang. Six years later, Hans is found homeless near the church, with only Jack's painting in his possession. He became a vagrant in Rome, wandering around the flea market and admiring pieces of artwork. He became a wandering musician, playing the accordion on the steps of a building when Jelenka, still looking elegant, spotted him. Upon noticing her, he approached her, and Jelenka explained that she was in Rome with Bram Bredius, who had a lecture to give, and that she was searching for something she couldn't find, as she had previously mentioned. Han didn't believe he was a musician, and Theo sent his regards, letting him know that he was aware of Han's presence in Rome. Jelenka invited him to Galleria Borghese, where they spoke, and Han revealed that he no longer painted. Although Han attempted to leave, Jelenka persuaded him to stay by telling him that Bram had apologized for ridiculing his dear drawing, and that Bram was a good man. However, Han remained skeptical. Jelenka complimented him on his impression, told him that he had painted her beautifully, and that he was the genuine article. Jelenka left in a carriage, telling him to wait for her as she had a surprise for him. Han joked that he anticipated it would be a divorce, but he was pleasantly surprised. Han followed Jelenka to Bram's lecture on Caravaggio and other classic Spanish artists. As Bram discussed Vermeer and his relationship with Caravaggio, Han resumed drawing and copied Caravaggio's work in his sketchbook, inspired by the discussion. Later, Han received treatment to shave his beard, hoping to impress Jelenka during their lunch date. During their lunch, Jelenka praised Han's impresario, impressed by his business acumen. The conversation flowed smoothly until a boy suddenly jumped in front of them, begging for money. Without hesitation, they both gave him some coins, assuming he would use the money to buy alcohol for his father, as was often the case with beggars in the area. Han couldn't help but feel a pang of guilt as he watched the boy walk away, wondering if they had made the right decision. Jelenka couldn't resist opening a letter addressed to Han, and her curiosity paid off when she discovered that Theo had given him a whopping 15,000 pounds for his work. Delighted with the news, she ordered an expensive bottle of wine and a room for the night, a gesture of gratitude for Han's restoration of Hal's, another masterful forgery. As they settled into the room, Jelenka informed Han that she would not be sleeping with him. Puzzled, Han asked her why, and Jelenka fired back with a question of her own, why did he desire it so much? The tension between them hung in the air, palpable and thick like a fog that refused to dissipate. In the rented room, Han hears Jay playing her accordion and is impressed by her talent. He thinks that she could make money from it, not realizing that Jelenka had already been earning money by playing with her father, even though it often resulted in her going to bed hungry due to her father's alcohol spending. Later, a package arrives with clothes for Han, and Jelenka undresses provocatively, asking him to draw her body. They get intimate, and Han feels like he has exacted revenge against Bram by sleeping with his wife. However, Jelenka becomes Han's new muse, but she doesn't seem to like the idea. While traveling by carriage, they stop at a flea market, and Jelenka sees an old painting that she admires. Han uses this to try and prove that unsigned paintings can be good. But Jelenka disagrees, worried about what Bram would say. Han insults her and calls her names, and Jelenka slaps him before leaving. Han then rants about having to dispose of 20 paintings because of Bram. Jelenka says that it wasn't only Bram who criticized him, many others said that his works are very flat. Later, Han shows Jelenka the sensual drawing he had made of her and asks if they are flat to her then throws it over the ground, and then leaves. After resorting to drinking again, Han recalls Bram's statement that there must be a connection between Vermeer and Caravaggio. This inspires Han to create a masterful forgery that is just as authentic as the real thing. He creates replicas of an unsigned painting using a Caravaggio sketch and Jelenka as his muse. Using the money Theo provided, Han buys a house and a car and becomes isolated. While collecting his belongings from his former studio, Han reunites with Theo, who asks about his life in Southern Europe. They reconcile, and Theo shares a painting he made for Jelenka. Han proposes creating a Vermeer painting similar to Jesus Has Risen and selling it to a nice man leaving for America. Theo is skeptical about its authenticity and concerned about the necessary documents. They negotiate the sale, agreeing to a 70 over 30 split. Han wants Bredius to authenticate the painting, but only through Theo, as Bredius would not do it for Han. During another one of Jelenka's performances, Han gives her the first painting he made for her in Rome, and they continue seeing each other. Han proposes to Jelenka, but Bram interrupts and Jelenka goes to him. They argue and get into a physical altercation, resulting in Bram destroying the forgery. After Han repaired the broken canvas painting, he burned it. He then proceeded to drink under the pouring rain, perhaps drowning his sorrows. During the trial, a psychiatrist serves as an expert witness, explaining Han's struggles with alcoholism. However, the prosecutor paints Han as a narcissistic psychopath who is evil only to enrich himself, highlighting his ownership of many properties in Amsterdam. Han rebukes the prosecutor, calling them a bourgeoisie snob, just like the others. He questions whether the prosecutor has ever paused in front of a painting and been captivated by its beauty or ever been to a museum. 
However, the prosecutor persists in portraying Han as a Nazi. Han's outburst in court highlights the tension between societal expectations and individual artistic expression. It also underscores the subjective nature of art and the difficulty in evaluating its worth. The prosecutor's focus on Han's personal wealth and character rather than the value of his art speaks to the commodification of art, and the art world's often murky motivations. As Han returns to his lavish Amsterdam mansion, his mind is consumed by his most recent forgery of a Vermeer painting. He spends countless hours scrutinizing every detail of the painting, questioning whether it is as close to the original as possible. His alcohol addiction only fuels his emotions, leading him down a dark path of use and odd behavior, such as snorting all his and engaging in strange acts like defecating on his hands. Despite this, Han can't help but feel a connection to the girl in the painting, who bears a striking resemblance to Jelenka. One day, Han's son Jack visits him, and as he admires the forged painting, he notices something amiss. Jack questions the authenticity of the painting, and Han, in a desperate attempt to cover up his lies, suggests cutting the painting to make it look older. But Jack is appalled at the thought of his father indulging in illegal activities instead of pursuing artistry. Despite Jack's concerns, Han convinces him that the painting will bring them both fame and fortune, and that being known as an artist is secondary to this goal. In a dream, Jack agrees to cut the painting to make it look more authentic, and Han plans to destroy the forgery after selling it to expose Bram Bredius's inability to distinguish real from fake. At first, Bredius criticizes the painting, but as he examines it more closely, he declares it to be the missing link between Vermeer and Caravaggio due to its color pigment and aging. To complete the painting's documentation, they inquire about its origins, and Theo concocts a story about it being from a bankrupt noble named Marquis Doria de Pamfilch. Bredius is filled with pride at having discovered such an important piece of art history. Han and Jack arrive at the grand exhibition of Vermeer's Lost Art, hosted by Bram, the renowned art expert. The event is bustling with people, and the air is thick with excitement and anticipation. Han and Jack slip into the crowd, their eyes darting around, searching for an opportunity to execute their plan. Finally, the moment arrives, and they present the forged painting to Bram. Jack surreptitiously hands Han the knife, and he disappears into the throng, moving closer to the fake masterpiece. Suddenly, Jelenka appears, her presence like a bolt of lightning. She approaches Han, her eyes filled with wonder as she gazes upon the painting. Han explains that he modeled the woman in the painting after her fierce eyes and that he painted it himself, not Vermeer. Jelenka is taken aback, disbelief etched on her face, but Han persists, pointing to the Messiah's eyes and how they reflect her soul. Suddenly, Jelenka sees the knife, and fear grips her heart as she runs up the stairs with Han in hot pursuit. In a private moment, Jelenka realizes that he is here to humiliate Bram. Then Jelenka pleads with him not to do it, telling him that she has already left Bram. Before they can continue, Jack arrives with the introduction, pushing Han to take action. But in a moment of confusion, Han kisses Jack instead of doing what he intended. In prison, he writes a letter to Jack, admitting his failure and asking for forgiveness. He hopes that Jack will remember him as a good father, despite his criminal activities. After Han and Jelenka's marriage, they hoped for a peaceful life together. However, the onset of World War II brought chaos and destruction to their doorstep. The Nazis' invasion of Holland put Han's life in danger, as they became interested in the fake Vermeer painting that he had created. The painting, meant to be a harmless forgery, had now become a liability, and Han found himself caught in a web of deceit and treachery. Theo, one of the Nazi procurers, saw an opportunity to profit from the situation and proposed to Han the idea of selling the fake Vermeer to Goring. The price was astronomical, but Han knew that selling it to the Nazis would be a death sentence for him. Despite the danger, he decided to create another replica and presented it to Goring. However, Han was anxious because the paint was still drying, and he feared that any scrutiny would reveal the forgery. Theo, however, was a master at deception, and he sold the fake Vermeer with great conviction, convincing Goring that it was an authentic masterpiece. The sale was successful, but Han's problems were far from over. A photograph of him partying with Nazi officers put him in the prosecutor's crosshairs, and he faced charges of war crimes for his association with the Nazis. Han's fate now hung in the balance as any association with the Nazis could lead to severe consequences. He found himself caught in a never-ending cycle of lies and deception. Han vehemently maintains that he is nothing but a con artist, not a traitor. The scene shifts to Han indulging in a wild party with the Nazis, where he allows women to pluck jewelry from a fishbowl. The party is replete with debauchery, and Han promises to forge yet another last canvas. However, Jelenka has grown tired of fake art and cryptically suggests that Han is wandering aimlessly in the dark, and perhaps she should put an end to it once he has the chance. Han takes another alluring portrait of Jay donning a Nazi jacket, showcasing it to Goring and urging him to pass it on to Hitler. While Goring asks Han to sign it, Jay disapproves, shaking her head in dissent. Nevertheless, Goring leaves without passing it on, leaving Jay unhappy. Han's behavior turns increasingly violent and obsessive, leading to a heated argument about art and originality, where Jelenka delivers the harsh truth that Han can never hope to become the next Rembrandt, 
Hals, or even Vermeer. Jalenka is repulsed by Han's irrational actions and tendencies, including his seeming obsession with pleasing Hitler. Han contends that Hitler is a patron of genuine art. Over time, Han grows older, and a mob of furious people storms his house, throwing dirt at him. The prosecutor demands that Han answer for his treacherous behavior and seeks to punish him severely. As Han tries to protest, he faints and collapses on the floor. Jalenka visits his French house, clutching the drawing of herself that was intended for the Fura, and conceals it. Next, the psychiatrist testifies that Han's only motive was to seek revenge, but the prosecutor remains unconvinced. Han continues to insist that he painted the artwork and can prove it. While the psychiatrist implores for another chance for Han to redeem himself, the prosecutor is adamant about punishing him severely for his Nazi affiliation. The psychiatrist believes that only God has the right to take a life, and hence, he doesn't support the death penalty. After agreeing to paint a new piece to save himself from execution, Han sets to work creating a painting that closely resembles his previous forgery. As he puts brush to canvas, he pours all of his passion and skill into the work, determined to make it convincing enough to fool even the most discerning eye. When the newly painted Vermeer is unveiled to the media and the audience, it creates a stir with its uncanny likeness to the painting sold to Goring. People start to talk, wondering if Han truly did make a fool out of the Nazis. To judge the authenticity of the painting, they call on Bredius, an expert in the field. He gives a second look at it. As he gives his expert opinion, he takes the chance to deliver another blow to Han's ego, commenting that although the paintings may look similar from afar, the one made by Han is pale and plain in comparison. Enraged by Bredius's words, Han rises from his seat and confronts the expert, berating him for his lack of foresight. He boldly claims that Bredius has been outsmarted by him since the expert authenticated the questionable piece of art. Jalenka barges into the court carrying luggage with the paraphernalia hand used. After Jalenka presents the evidence, there is a moment of stunned silence in the courtroom. The revelation that the painting is a forgery is a blow to Bredius's credibility, as an expert, and he looks visibly shaken. The pause in the trial gives Han a moment to bask in the attention of the media, and the public, who are now hailing him as a hero for outsmarting the Nazis. When Han is asked if he forged the paintings, he doesn't hesitate to confess. He seems almost proud of his crime as if it were a clever trick he pulled off. He explains his reasoning behind charging a high price for the forgeries, and the audience can't help but chuckle at his audacity. Despite his bravado, Han is eventually found guilty of fraud and is sentenced to a year in prison, as well as a hefty fine. As the courtroom empties out and the reality of his punishment sets in, Han takes a closer look at the canvases that he spent so much time and effort forging. He lights the cigarette. The radio broadcast by the Netherlands press office announces the death of Han van Meegeren at the age of 58, only a month into his one-year prison sentence. The pre-credits state that Han van Meegeren worked for six years on his Vermeer forgery and his style in forgery is regarded as the highest standard by modern experts. The Emmesgangers, one of his forged works, still draws a crowd at the museum today. Despite the controversy and crime surrounding his work, his works are still regarded as art. It's a tragic end to a fascinating life of a man who made a name for himself in the art world through deceit and forgery.